But with Grab, I wanted to try something different. So I, the people that I looked for were people who could wake up with me at 4 a.m., go to the drivers, and sit down with them, drink beer, try to convince them, speak their language. So we looked for a lot of people with that street hustle. Welcome to Hustle Share, the podcast that features the daily grinds of unique hustlers around the world to show not our differences, but that our hustles are very much alike. Now here's your host, Ronster Bay Pyong. Welcome to episode 22 of the Hustle Share podcast. My name is Ronster and I'm your host. And this episode is brought to you by Payroll Hero, a time attendance, scheduling, HR, and payroll solution for Philippine companies. If you are new to the show, we'd like to welcome you on board because this podcast allows you to learn from other hustlers by listening to them. We feature startup founders, business people, and unique hustlers, and we talk about their journeys, their grinds, their challenges, and their biggest mistakes so that we can learn from each other and apply it on our own daily grind. But as always, this podcast contains some not safe for work and explicit content, so please make sure that there's no kids around when you're listening to this. Now let's begin this episode because this is probably the most jam-packed episode we've ever had because we have the president of Grab Philippines, Brian Koo, on this episode. And it's going to be an hour packed with so much learnings from the guy that runs Grab here in the Philippines and he's going to share with us a lot of learnings and hacks on how he started and how he grew Grab from literally having nothing to having a lot of taxis signed up when they first started out. Then he's also going to share with us how difficult it was when they transitioned into Grab Car and it gets better than that because he's going to share how he grew the Grab team along with how he keeps in touch with all the Grab drivers, along with all the Grab users he can interact with. And the best part is he's going to share with us how he manages his team, how he handles difficult decisions, what are the conversations happening at the top of the Grab management level, and how he copes with stress and all the personal struggles because he has so many responsibilities on his shoulders. So grab your pen and paper. And let's learn from the hustle behind Grab. And let's begin this episode right now. Welcome to the latest episode of the Hustle Share Podcast. I am so thrilled because I'm I'm here with one of the guys that I literally look up to. Because there's no other guy I know in the tech or startup industry that has so much at stake with what he's doing and rather compared to this guy. So again, without further ado, I've said it in the intro. Welcome to the show, Brian Koo of Grab. Hi everyone. Hi Ron. Great to be on the show. Thanks yes. for inviting us. No problem, man. Like we, we've been to uh, several shows. It's either I'm with you or we're right next to each yeah, other. Exactly. Always, oh, always. Like, there's four times already. Yes, yes. <laughs> it's weird. So again, Brian, thanks to, for having the time. I know you're very busy. We're in your office right now as we're doing this, and there's so many things going on. I feel the vibe. You don't even have to say it. But, bro, let's just, um, for those who don't know you, which, again, I'm pretty sure there's not a lot of people who do that. Um, what's your hustle? Well, so I started out in the startup game late, I would okay. say. So I was in a startup guy from the get-go. Okay. So I... Did my schooling here. Right. Uh, I completed my schooling in Singapore. Right, um, right. So I graduated in NUS. Right. Uh, and then worked for a big corporate there. So I was okay. with a consulting firm, one of the wow. top three firms, uh, for a good six, seven years. Right. Before uh, the Z- Zalora opportunity came up. Correct, correct. And Rocket was looking to launch. That was the first. I'd say phase of tech startup. Right, right. The, around you say the, I met you in the rock in, in Zalora. In I Zalora, heard of you, right? Yes, in Zalora. Yeah. So that was around 2011. Right, 2011, right. 2012, which marked that first 
phase of startups coming into the true, country. True, true. When I say first phase, that was when serious money was being put in. Absolutely. Serious tech was being put in. Uh, mm-hmm. Serious manpower was being hired. Right. Um, so that's how it all started. Mm-hmm. That's how I got into the whole quote unquote startup right. scene. Technically, it wasn't mine. I wasn't a. Yeah. It wasn't an idea that I developed from scratch. I yeah. didn't raise my own funding. Mm. Uh, I came in as a co-founder who started the business, but yep. with preset funding. Got it. And uh, and somewhere along the way, um, I met Anthony Tan of Grab. Right. Uh, and uh, this was my taxi days. This was my my taxi in Malaysia. Right. And we started the company here as my taxi. My taxi. Uh, I remember so, this. So, right. Right. Correct. Um, that was around circa, I'd say, 2013. 20, yes, yes. So I ended up uh, investing a bit in Grab, never mm, intending to run it. Got it. Um, up until the time when we couldn't find uh, anybody. anybody to run it, I ended right. up like de facto uh, in charge. Okay, now when you get opportunities like this, the Zaloras, the Grabs, I mean, again, you said you're not the founder founder. But for someone to qualify for this role, what are you looking for in that type of, of thing? Because you said it's hard to find. What, why, what are those things? Well, you know, the, the selection criteria was pretty basic before, right? If you okay. were a, either a consultant or investment banker, yeah. then uh, you probably have the brain power right. um, to, to uh, like start a business. Yep. Then where where you got to prove yourself is really if you can roll up your sleeves and get down in the dirt. Absolutely. So not a lot of consultants are very comfortable with that. So, right. But I was always, I always enjoyed being more operational and getting mm. down into the, the dirt of things. When we did Zalora, I was handling the operation. So I started COD yes, 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 yes. in the country, right? And Boom. Now a lot of the e-commerce Thank guys. Thank this guy for COD or <laughs> else none of you guys will be able to buy anything online. <laughs> Customers are happy. <laughs> Other e-commerce players hate it because yep. uh, change the, the game, man. Holy it is, shit! It is. Right. So we we had to do COD to really capture a large part of the market when Correct. we were doing Zalora. Um, so we did. I did deliveries. I would pick and pack in the warehouse. Right. Uh, right. And then do reports. Basically, you did everything. Yep. Um, which I think a lot of the the newer companies large companies that are coming in setting up offices here Mm -hmm. i don't feel that the people that they hire get to experience the whole gamut of absolutely starting from scratch really getting down in the dirt and leaving your ego at the door and and growing it from from nothing right they come in with with big guns and bullets that we did not have when when we started Mm -hmm. both zalora and actually grab Mm. Um, Grab was even tougher. Grab, we came in without money. So it was really our yes. money that we put in at the start. The early investors that I know is 500 startups because they, they from what I, if I've heard, I mean, uh, Kylie Ang uh, always talks about it. Yes. Yeah, we're, we're invested in Grab and all that stuff. They're one of the early investors, right. but we came in even before that. So when oh, we started wow. Grab in the Philippines, Right. So Philippines was the second country outside of uh, Malaysia. Malaysia. Wow, I didn't know that. And okay. when we started it, it was really just us pooling together a bit of money. Bootstrap. We bootstrap wow. grab. Um, we did lose a lot of money on phones. I would assume, right? Uh, and uh, and uh, luckily, Vertex came in. Got it. Vertex and uh, believed in us, believed in the business, believed in the market, believed in what we were trying to achieve. Right. Um, put in some money, uh, mm. and that really got us going. We started expanding across mm. different countries, getting yeah. more investments, proving the business model, so on and so forth. And now, fast forward to now, you're this giant and again market leader uh, across Southeast Asia. Correct. Yeah, we, well, we try to be, we try right. to do right by our partners and our and our drivers. Got it. Now let's let's w- track back again and ride the hustle share time machine and whatnot. When when in your first encounter when you started doing grab from again you said rolling up your sleeves and all that, what do you think were the biggest progressions that you guys did? Because I'll come clean. I'm actually one of your drivers. Mm-hmm. And you don't know this because in 2014, 2015 I bought an extra car. Yeah. Because I saw the opportunity yeah. and like, all right, you guys gave me a Huawei to drive around. And 2014, if you bought a car, you would have been able to pay back that car in a year. Yes, that was like the golden age yeah. 
of incentives and like and whatnot. But I'm pretty sure that's gonna hurt you guys on your (laughs) cash burn because that was tough. I was making bank. Exactly. I was making good money. Driving an Uber and running a startup. Yeah. I mean, driving a Grab, my bad. Yeah. On, but technically, it's you're, same you're the same now. <laughs> uh, doing that, right? So how, what were your early recalls of the hustles that you did from my taxi, like with the Natasha's of the world and whatnot? What were those recalls of, 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 you, of, your, of your journey in Grab? Here? Oh, man, it, was, it wasn't like when we, did, when we started Zalora, right. we had to get suppliers to come in. Yeah. Um, I was fortunate enough to know a bunch of these people yeah. who who own the popular fashion yep, brands. Yep. Uh, and I could call them up on my phone and yep. say, hey, we have this new startup. Why don't you come in, mm-hmm. test it out? So that was sort of... When we, when we started Zalore, there was a immediate step one, step two, step three that I could yes. go there's through. There was a playbook per se. Right. right. Or it was easy to write that playbook because we knew we could execute on it. Got it. When we did Grab... I didn't know any taxi operator. Um, <laughs> yeah. I didn't know any. Like, I knew some phone suppliers. I knew right, telcos, right. but right. the main supply of taxis, we didn't know where it would come from. True. So we figured it out um, the best way. We even tried to go to LTFRB, get the list right, of phone numbers. Right. That list hasn't been updated in decades, I feel. <laughs> um, wow. So what we did was we started uh, this whole on the street mission of getting as many phone numbers as we could. Wow. And the way we did that was to take pictures of all these taxi. Ah, uh, the taxis, ones on the, 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 one ones on the, the doors. Wow. They're required to put their phone numbers correct, there. Correct, correct, correct. So I'm just showing, I'll, let me pull up that. Right. I still have that. But I, I would list. imagine it's like the, the yeah. those, oh so my God. I would go around, literally I would go around Taking driving pictures my of car, these. Right. taking pictures of all the taxis beside me. Wow. Their phone numbers in the doors. I would go to malls, <laughs> go to the taxi stand lineup. Wow. And get those pictures. Oh my God. And then call those those numbers and right. try to set meetings for operators. If I couldn't call the number, I would then just go to the garage. And randomly. That, randomly. Something that people and I, I don't think that everyone knows. Um, these taxis go to the garage at 4 a.m., 5 a.m. Yeah, yeah. So that was the schedule. 4 a.m., you're at the garage trying to pitch the product. Um, most of the time, you get rejected. Uh, we didn't have a brand name yet back then. Right. Uh, we'd talk to the drivers. We'd drink Red Horse with the drivers <laughs> at 4 a.m. in the morning. Wow. Uh, and then go to the office by 9, 10. And most of these taxis are up right. north, right? So it would take yeah. another two hours to get to Fairview our area. office in Makati. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, and then do the paperwork, like oh talk to our sales team, get updates, clock off at 10 p.m., do it all over again. How so, long did this take for you to at least gather enough traction to, to get early adapters as taxis? Oh, it seemed like forever. Of course, we went to a few big ones. Mm-hmm. Uh, and luckily, one taxi operator, 24-7, was our first partner. Yes. They, they agreed to going 50-50 on the phones. Wow. For their drivers. So, so they invested too. They invested too. They invested in their own drivers, um, which... You know, it was unheard of. So we're still very good friends with them now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, that helped start the whole conversation with the Correct. other taxi operators. Mm-hmm. Um, and that sort of kicked off Grab Taxi True. Um, back then. No? But yeah. it was a real struggle. There were a lot of slam doors in our faces. Yeah. Uh, there were a lot of, lots of beer in the morning. <laughs> lots of lost phones in the afternoon. Yes. Uh, we weren't worried yet um, that much on where to get passengers because we yeah. didn't have enough supply. So Correct. that was a period of intense supply focus Super. before we could market the product to passengers. What was the main catalyst for you to now turn the corner from being ta- from grab taxi to now to grab car idea? Because that's the, that's the thing that really changed the game. Yes. So, when you started doing private cars, which was unheard of anywhere, correct? right? Now it changed the game. Like, okay, now there's, there's something in here. So six months into Grab Taxi, okay. 
Uber came in. Got it. Uh, so you guys were the first. We were the first ride hailing, digital ride hailing in the Philippines. App. No, there was another ride hailing one, but it was I think via via phone. Ah. So we were the first digital. Di- you could summon a car digitally. Sure. sure. Um, and when Uber came in, they first worked with rental vehicles. Right. So, uh, that's right. Right. So all the, these the black cars transport. and whatnot. Correct. Right. Um, and we saw sort of a trend, right? That right. we couldn't fight with taxis because when you're working with taxis, uh, there there's different too many layers. There's yeah. us. There's the driver. There's the operator. Super. Um, when you're doing grab car, you sort of take away the fickleness of an operator. To True. Want to work you're direct. You. You're direct with the operator who's much. Uh, I guess smaller than a big fleet uh, of, of taxis, and the economics make more sense. It's and the reputation, I guess, is better too because we have. I mean, not not to shame the taxi operators, but there's always that that bad rep with 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 a mixed bag of how taxis are yes. sometimes. Yeah. That, right. That's very tough. That stigma on taxis is very tough right. to take away. We were trying to do that with the Grab Taxi brand okay. because we would train the drivers. We would give them incentives for good behavior. Right. But you're right. It It's not something that you can change overnight. Okay. So just like pulling that out and installing grab car right. uh, in its place sort of allowed you to start from scratch. Clean slate. Yeah. Right? yeah. And build the brand from, from there. Absolutely. Now from the grab car. Now this is, you're out 26 months in. Now there's competition. And eventually, we all know what happened now. The competition became, you guys merged into what, right? You guys went Voltron on us, yeah. right? But before that, right, this, this was a cutthroat, neck-to-neck battle. For a year end, what do you think are the things that you guys did right to acquire? Because I, I stood up. I was in the Jupiter line, lining up. and when I, I didn't want to call you. I, I had your phone number. But nope, I'm not gonna do this. I'm gonna do this the normal way. I and couldn't. I wouldn't have been able to do anything. Also, I stand same, in the same, same line but I didn't want to do that else. too. Right, right. Um, so when when Uber came in, uh, they were focused primarily on cars. No, when, yeah. And then when we did grab car, admittedly we did burn a lot of relationships mm. that we had with the taxi operators. Yeah. Um, but. It's disrupt or be disrupted, right? You true, true. Move forward or you die as a stagnant mm-hmm. uh, company. So we went full steam ahead with Grab Car. Mm-hmm. Uh, and during the early days, it was really a neck and neck battle. Super. Here in the Philippines. Yeah. And uh, it was a battle on winning more drivers, onboarding drivers, and getting passengers by. Yeah. Know, providing them the service they, they need. Right. Uh, do you get the car there quickly? Do you uh, is the pricing correct? Mm-hmm. Well, promos also play the yes. big part of it. Uh, the quality of that vehicle also play the big part of it. Mm-hmm. Now that went on for a while, and then the government changed. That's and the then they thing, started right. implementing very local regulations that we did not see in other countries. Absolutely. Now, the way Grab set up, uh, we try and localize as much as we can. Yeah. Uh, and everything from the app to the way the companies manage. Correct. So we're given autonomy by the regional uh, right. group to be able to execute and decide on things much more quickly. Yeah, yeah. And I feel other big startups here right. are, because I experienced that in Zalora. It was right. a bit different. Um, and we were able to, I think because of this localization and quick decision making, mm-hmm. we were able to out execute them on certain things. Right. Uh, the big thing when uh, the government said no more cars and uh, put place the cap on the Yes, vehicles. I remember this, yeah. man, the, the TNBS thing, Correct. right? So You're all over the news back then. Exactly, right? <laughs> yeah. So background to, to people listening is that the, there's a cap on the number of uh, private car for hire franchises that the government imposed. So supply was limited. So there right. was a decision, how do you then maneuver in this new regulatory environment? Do you go for passengers? Do you go for drivers? Yeah. We decided to go hard on uh, drivers, right? Yes. If you take care of the supply, if you serve your supply well, they will serve their demand, demand well. Because passengers aren't, 
our direct customers. They're the direct customer of the driver because that driver spends 30, 40 minutes with them in the car, whereas us, we are a, we neighbor, should be a right. 10, 10 second interaction with them Absolutely. when they book the car. Um, but that's shifting also now. True. Um, so, so we did focus a lot on drivers, how to, how to endear ourselves to drivers. I started mm -hmm. coming out more and, uh, yeah. and, you know, being more reachable for a lot of our peers, yes. a lot of drivers. I see you in the groups. You <laughs> answer chats. people. Yes. I was like, wow, this guy, how do you even find time for this? Like, yeah, it's, uh, it's usually late at night when <laughs> before, before I go to sleep, which is the wrong thing because once you start getting into a conversation, no, it no, goes man. all the way, right? Opens um, up a can of worms. Correct. We started yeah. using Medium. So I guess part of the hustle there is we started using available mediums, right? right. So we do uh, Facebook Lives. Uh, yes. It was the easiest way to reach the drivers. We mm. tap into Facebook driver community groups. Yeah. Um, we'd hold events. I would wow. do a, uh, we just did one last weekend. We do a Paris session. Oh, wow. So we get a street food uh, vendor and say, free food from this hour to this hour. Nice. Just come and have a conversation with us and the team. Mm -hmm. uh, so we got like 100 drivers last wow. uh, Saturday. Uh, That's crazy. To come and then just have an open conversation with them. Be, be a bit more open to them. It was essentially what we said, what we, what we did was what Uber was doing. Mm -hmm. Uh, for its passengers, we would overdo for our drivers. You and took care of the other side. Took care of the, the other spectrum. side. So we did get a lot more supply. Uh, we were able to acquire a good amount of supply, which then translated into shorter wait times uh, for passengers, better allocation rates. And plus, you did cash. That was a big thing. And we did cash. That was a big thing. Exactly. Then the government. Uh, the winds of regulations shifted <laughs> again, right? And right. Uber got suspended. It was Super. a big uplift for us. So a lot of drivers yeah. moved over and did not move back. Correct. And I think that started a virtuous cycle for us uh, that helped build our brand even more and get us more supply in a world where you couldn't add supply. Correct. And, and you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's such a fickle market. You know, the, you know, I can like, yeah, they're good here. And then you can always go to the other thing. It is. Whatever it benefits is. them. It's, the uh, nothing's forever. <laughs> Absolutely. Very good. All right. Now, Brian, let's take a quick break. But when we come back, let's talk about the deep dive on how you are running this whole thing now because there's so many things going on. Um, I, I wish we had five hours, but, you know, we have to take uh, a quick break and we got to pay the bills and more of that after the break. Hey, hustlers, let's talk about something really important real quick. Something that a lot of you I know can relate to, especially if you're running a business. And I'm talking about payroll. You know how hard it is and time consuming this is, especially that you have to do it twice a month. And as a guy who's been running tech startups for over 10 years now, this is something that I did not enjoy doing at all. It's not like it's because I don't like paying my employees. No, but it's already hard looking for funding to fund for your payroll. And then it's so much more harder if you're doing this manually. Luckily, I've found something that I highly recommend that you try. And it's from our friends from Payroll Hero. And here's how Payroll Hero works. They use your employee's face as your primary biometric to avoid buddy punching and ghost employees. So unless your team can figure out a way to swap each other's faces, tracking time and performance will never be your problem again. Payroll Hero is also very consumer friendly because it's also based on web and mobile and it's also cloud-based so you never have to worry about your clunky old biometric machines. So now you can automate time, attendance, scheduling, HRIS, and a payroll platform wrapped all in one. We have a very special bonus for you hustlers listening on the Hustle Share podcast. All you need to do is go to www.payrollhero.ph and use the promo code HUSTLESHARE to get a 60-day free trial. That's technically four payrolls that you can do all for free so you can see how it works for you. And the beauty about it is there's no upfront payment needed to do this. So never worry about payroll again with Payroll Hero, optimizing work productivity with happiness. And we are back with Brian Koo 
of Grab. Uh, what's your official title now, Brian? So I'm now the president of Grab Philippines. Okay, you were formerly the country head of Grab Philippines. What's the difference now? So I guess the difference, the main difference there is whereas before my scope was a bit more, I guess, it seems a bit more narrow now if you look at it at the context of what Grab's offering. Okay. Uh, it was narrow in the sense that I was mostly focused on transport. Got it. So how do you improve transport? Everything mm -hmm. that you know people would ride on. Got it. Now, now because of the new verticals that we've launched, Grab Super. Food, Grab Pay, Grab Ex Everything. Grab Express, we launched yeah. before. But um, as we're trying to grow all these new verticals mm -hmm. and as we're growing the team, we tap onto the same user base. Yes. And uh, at, oftentimes, we'll tap on to a very similar supply base. Got it. Now, if it's disjointed and there's heads there's like a country head per vertical got it then it there could it could cause friction and yeah. miscommunication between the different verticals so we decided to have the precedent position to help manage across oversee all these everything verticals. Right. Yeah. basically see how we could maximize um, our our ability to offer the consumer their everyday yep. you know needs through the app see how we could optimize internal operations mm. so we're not duplicating stuff right. uh, how could we you know combine acquisition for mm. supply right. so a lot of the things where it goes cross vertical is what i would look at wow. now the specifics and operations of food mm. on transport and express uh, we have a great team in each of those verticals managing right. it now you mentioned team and this is what i'm very very curious about because you know you need the Avengers or multiple Avengers teams to get to get this started. Yeah. Went from the from day zero to how you do that. Was there a strategy over how you acquire talent? Oh and, yeah, for sure. And then how do you retain talent? Because it's easy to acquire talent, but if someone poaches them, yeah. offers you them twice or triple what you're paying them, then bye bye. Yeah. Right. Of course. Like during the first days of grab there was a very specific type of person that we would look for it's to grab dna it's to grab dna and their ability to cope with the demands of the business got it now the demands of the business would change over time okay uh, of course but when we started out um the natural thing that a lot of i guess the newer startups would do is to find uh Find talent from the top schools. Yep. Know, get those trainees and management trainees. Yep. And yep. People from reputable companies. Right. Like if there was probably any other startup uh, that had the path, like like Zalora, right? There's right. Right. Table. I would have done that, mm. which is what we did. We took talent from big retailers and mm. and what what have you. But with Grab, I wanted to try something different. Okay. But the people that I looked for were people who could wake up with me at 4 a.m., wow. go to the drivers and sit down with them, drink beer, wow. try to convince them, speak their language. So we looked for a lot of people with that street hustle. Uh, street hustle. I love that So right. I stayed away from the management trainees. Sure. I stayed away from the more, yeah. um, you know, more analytical type of uh, individuals. Okay. We looked for street fighters, basically. Street fighters. Um and I think that's the DNA that we still have here, even though mm -hmm. we've now added on those analysts, those right. you know, a more managerial layer to it. But what we always, what we always look for is if that person has that grit and stamina. Got it. Um, now, of course, compensation needs to be fair yes. uh, for the amount of work they do. Mm -hmm. But I think one of the reasons why they stay is grab unlike other um, companies that I've been part of, there's a big social mission for Grab. Yes. Um, there's a social mission in the sense that what we do and how well we do it would translate to how easy it is for people to get around. Super. Which would then translate to other aspects of their lives. Yes. And this whole social mission is what unites a lot of the people here, a lot of the grabbers, so we call mm -hmm. the internal um, hires we have and but it's not one dimensional in that sense right 
the social mission and the betterment of society sits at the core. Got it. Right? It, it goes everything from improving mobility, getting people home, um, empowering you know, micro-entrepreneurs yep. through the platform. But that's multifaceted in the sense that there's a very analytical piece of achieving that. There's yep. a very salesy piece of achieving that. Mm -hmm. There's a very marketing comms piece of achieving that. And everyone who works on those pieces are united by that core. Common goal, right. But... Yeah. They're excited by the specific work that they do, right? Correct. So it's it's a two layer thing. It's not just mm -hmm. oh I I I'm an analyst, but, but then as, why, what am I analyzing things it. for? But as you change directions again, you're, you're now so multifaceted. How do you rally that across? Because things add on on top of it, you know. Because things again, priorities change, the demands for talent change. As the guy running this whole thing from the bottom, or just out of Rough numbers. How many people are under you now, roughly? So the the staff that we have here in Grab Philippines uh, range from anywhere from three hundred to four hundred people. Plus the drivers, which is around drivers would, you know, drivers all the way upwards to seventy thousand oh drivers my God. all over the country. That's how many people is basically under your your responsibility, and that's a big. Yeah. Big, big responsibility. It is a big responsibility. Yeah, we're literally president right. of transportation, right? But for, for you, how do you send the message down? Because as a leader, right, you're all, you're aside from hiring the best talent, you're always the guy who defines what the North Star is. And yeah. if that changes and there's more details that you add, how do you make sure that every nobody falls out? Who? It's a tough one. It's not easy to do, especially in a big organization. And every time you release a new direction, True. there will always be friction. E friction, right? Yes. You got to accept that. You mm -hmm. got to accept that no one ever will be in agreement over something, right. Right? not 100%. Correct. So you got to manage that minority. So decide for the majority, but manage for the major minority. Um, it's always greater good, right? And then you try and figure out how you can tweak whatever right. that decision is for that minority who mm -hmm. feels dissatisfied with whatever decision's made. True. But, uh, and you need to be able to have a cadence on how you communicate uh, changes. True. So to drivers, we have a different cadence. Employees, we do our town halls, we do our stand-ups and yeah. what have you, um, which is very important. And then to drivers... You know, we do all these sessions, Facebook Live. We have a mm -hmm. separate app for driver forums where they could communicate. We engage uh, the channels that they're used to, like these Facebook mm -hmm. groups, uh, just to get the message across. You know? mm -hmm. And I guess, luckily and unluckily, everything we do, the media picks up. So of the course. media helps us <laughs> cascade. Yeah. You affect everyone our, all our lives, so right. of course. Right. We, we try to, we try to. Now... On the other side of the spectrum, so you're talking about operations. What's it like behind closed doors, working with Anthony Tans and whatnot? Just paint a rough picture with us. What are the conversations you guys discuss on that level? That you know, the conversations over time they've evolved from a more op from very operational conversations to now a lot of the conversations that we have is on how uh, are very centered in the customer. Got it. So. This whole customer first, customer centric approach to how we do things sets a different way of thinking through new processes, new policies, new okay. features. Um, and a lot of the discussions are now centered around that, around the customer, whether it's an internal customer or an external customer. Got it. Um, but throughout, whether it's operations, whether it's yeah. customer first, all very, you know, very rigorous, right. uh, intellectually rigorous, and demanding conversations. Correct. You know? So numbers. It needs to be numbers, yeah. and there needs to be an outcome. It's not just Absolutely. talking for talking sense. Absolutely. And at, and in that sense, now let's. I just want to talk talk about something or a couple of things that that's very important for people. Since the merger, what was that transition for you? Because everybody knows now that Uber and Grab is one. Yeah. Right. And a lot of people, a lot of analysts. We're saying that it's a good thing or a bad thing because that's what people do. They get paid to talk, yeah. right? But from your point of view, what was the thing that changed the most when the merger happened? And why is it? Why, why are we here now? Yeah. You'd be surprised on... Uh, so I was surprised 
to see how much people disliked us. Like wow. everyone came out of the woodwork. And that was depressing for me, right? Because when okay. I guess when there was a, another player in the market, uh, there'd be people talking good things and bad things of about each player. Now there's one player in the market or, or one major player in the market. Right. And everyone just shit on you. So it's like that so, open forum in high school. Like, yeah, you're an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> you, become, you become the bad guy. Yeah. Uh, which was depressing for me because we always wanted to be the good guy. Absolutely. We always tried you to had work pure with intentions. the government. Right. Um, you know, be more open to coming up with regulations jointly with the government. Mm -hmm. We never said no. We rarely said no to what the government wanted. Yep. Uh, and then suddenly we became the bad guy. Everyone was hitting on us from our customers yeah. to our partners to the, wow. to the regulators that we used we used to be you know working more closely with uh and, and that was a very dark period in my life so wow. I, I think yeah. i aged like 10 so years so you went like <laughs> dark like the bearded that's what, are you wearing a beard like your bearded captain yeah, america it's, it's never it's right? never gone away <laughs> since then you grew a beard it, you know? it, and i this, i told my wife this and i told uh, our regional guys this that um i and i pretty much confided in them that you know this was mentally and emotionally draining usually you know if it was solving a problem it was easy it was yeah. dealing with uh, regular dealing with regulations dealing with partners right. that was all part of it was fun it was all right. part of the game you're trying to solve something w after the the merger and and i guess shit hit the fan right um it it was a bit more a lot more emotionally draining right? and i i don't know it was hard because not there's not a lot of people that I know that I can talk to that understands about, what that the understands hell you're going through. That, right. that understands uh, has gone through it, right, and right. really understands. I could talk to a lot of mentors that I have, friends that mm -hmm. I have, mm -hmm. that could comment on it. Mm -hmm. But people who've who've gone through the whole struggle, um, yeah. not a lot. Absolutely, and again, you're car carrying a cross that. I don't know anybody else is, is carrying. Yeah, in, in I, I mean, I take it personally. Because you care. I, I care. I right. take it personally when people say something bad about the driver. I used to get into fights in Facebook because wow. of that. And, right. uh, and people would tag you randomly. Oh, this guy was... Yeah, like, what I hate most are, is are, are people who I'm friends with on Facebook tagging me about like complaints if they could message me directly and like, what yeah. are you trying to say about exactly unfriend but. there you go <laughs> so if you're no longer a friend of brian that's probably why <laughs> and whatnot anyway brian let's take another break and then we do i i'm, I'm gonna take down notes yeah because i need to know uh your tactics i'm a student here and i'm gonna learn about how you do your hustle and what are the tips you can share more of that after the break Effective automation is the best way for businesses to stay competitive. And having a chatbot for your business lets you easily automate and optimize sales, marketing, and customer service in the digital age. Chatbot PH will build, train, maintain, and market your chatbot across all messaging platforms. Our team uses the latest AI technologies to enable you to better serve customers 24-7, 365. Set a meeting with us today. Message us now at m.me slash chatbotph. And we're back from the break for the last part with Brian Gu of Grab. Was, man, this is like, this is already like three episodes in one is after just two things. Like, I, I'm you all mean, ears. You mean there's no more part two of this? I'd love to, uh, but right now my jaw is on the floor and I'm just trying to, pre trying to not show it to you because it's embarrassing <laughs> it's so good and um i'm a big fan and now it's time to go into the bullpen and throw questions that you know uh never been asked of you or at least never doesn't get asked as normally never been uh, recorded asked yeah. all the time but never been recorded there you go <laughs> <laughs> okay so real quick easily from from what you you've experienced right and you respond you get so much criticism what do you how do you respond how do you i mean you said it's personal to you what how do you respond to criticism now what, what was the learning for that so you know i i used to have well i still do mm -hmm. i used to have a temper a temper God. every time someone would say 
bad things about Grab. Like mm-hmm. I said, I take it personally. Mm-hmm. Every time I'm beside someone, even if I don't know there's someone trying to right. book a Grab, right. couldn't get one, I would take it personally. I took it personally when someone beside me was trying to book an Uber before wow. Uber was still around. Then I'll try and talk to them and say, hey, why don't you try Grab? Wow. But especially if there are complaints on Facebook or mm-hmm. people dissing on the service, right. I would go in and like get involved in that conversation. Absolutely. I've mellowed down a lot. Yeah. Um, especially our PR. Zen. Our PR. It's coaches. the beard, bro. That's yeah, it's the beard. <laughs> <laughs> and my PR guys told there me to go. stop replying to Facebook. Absolutely. Uh, Which, by the way, he was with us today. So shout out to RV yeah. right now. <laughs> Just making sure that we're staying on point. <laughs> so so I, I used to do that a lot and realize it wasn't very constructive because you shouldn't respond in anger. Sure. Right. So now, you know, if there's criticism, s- step back. Don't respond right away. Got it. Try and have an objective uh, view. Without any emotions it. as much as possible. Yes. It's like, if people give you criticism or someone higher up tells you you can't do this, yeah. step back, right? It's not the end of the world. Uh, unless it's something that you really believe in and you mm-hmm. want to fight for. Don't bother sure. because there's going to be a hundred things. Pick your Learn battles. How, right. Pick your battles. Learn which ones will move the needle, which ones won't. And okay. only you as the leader could determine that. And you've got to cascade down to the people managing it. Absolutely. Um, if you let it get to you... You lose. You, you lose, man. It, you're, you're Sun gonna, too. This is art of war shit, bro. Like, like, you can't, you can't yeah. let it get to you. That's yeah. one of the biggest learnings I had from from all that criticism okay. uh, and that's why stay away from Facebook <laughs> every time there's like big issues stay away from Facebook absolutely uh, have a strong team uh, that can respond to it, Got it. Uh, don't ignore it mm-hmm. but, but decipher which ones are absolutely. important step back and then let step it back. that's the most important thing step back don't let it get to you because after a minute you, you won't even care right absolutely now next one i wanted to know is motivation again it's so taxing you technically you're technically in charge of how many people's millions of lives on a daily basis now i cannot imagine a world or at least the philippines without grab things will just stop thank you you know so how do you motivate yourself that you know you have so much on your shoulders to keep going because eventually you're gonna hit a wall right how do you get over that hump I've always liked solving problems. Right? So in transportation, there will always be a problem that you need to solve. Mm-hmm. Um, and I like being able to observe those problems. Or not that I like. I'm, I'm in a position where I can easily observe those problems. Okay. And I'm also in a position um, to be able to try and at least try and solve those problems. Got it. So I don't know if People do know if I've been someone's taking a picture of me. Right. Taking the train. I take the MRT going back most of the time. So my wow. daily commute, I take a grab coming to work, I'll take the train going back. I live wow. in the north. It's much faster to take the train Absolutely. than to sit in a car. Um, now, I do that to also, or when I do that, I'm able to see the struggles that um, people who who have no other choice yep. but to commute through public transport. You're one um, with them. right? Yeah, and the problem is not when you're already in the vehicle. Yes, it may be uncomfortable in the train, right, but it gets right. you there. No? The problem is really, for me right now, the wait time that people yes. experience. Yes, because I don't think the demand also is way, way more than the supply. Correct. So as well. that's... That's one example of what motivates me to keep going and really, you know, delve into transport, find mm. solutions for that. Uh, and I do find the whole transportation industry very exciting. And yep. as we move towards the everyday app uh, model, right. I do find food exciting. I do find pay yep, exciting. Yep. So a lot of the things that we do, I find exciting. Right? Yes. I, I tell this to people right, that of all the startups that I did, so I did Zalora, I did a lending startup. Uh, I did a baby, online baby startup, which we shut down. Uh, the, of all those products, the only product that I use on a regular basis is Grab. Yes. So I cr- I'm part of something that I 
you know, also you in, are the consumer I, I, as well. I'm yeah. the consumer exactly. So yeah. I understand uh, what a consumer would need. Then mm -hmm. I would drive sometimes also Got it. Uh, to understand Ooh. what the drivers would need. Wow. So, so it's it's a it's a nice business that you can get involved in in all the aspects Correct. of it, right? And being involved in that helps you understand what other issues there is in the world, well, our immediate world, to yeah. solve. And that's what motivates me. I just I like solving yeah. problems. I remember I, 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 I was doing that. I do it before when I was still grabbing Sundays. I mean, it's taxing. That's my rest day. But the conversations I get. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm like, ooh, I didn't know that. I didn't yeah. see that coming from love problems to really deep shit. Which right. is like wow. That was. I wish I can do a podcast while doing that. Maybe back you then. should do a podcast with a few drivers. See what their hustle. Is. I would love to. So if you can recommend me to a few Grab drivers, I would love yeah. to know their hustle because this show is again all about showing what's similar among us rather than what's different. Yep. Yep. Right. So again, uh, next one I wanted to know stress. All right. Aside from growing a beard, how do you manage stress now? You guys are all bearded here. Is, is there is there a theme to beards? To this? Uh, you know, that's the disguise. It's not November yet. <laughs> <laughs> Leading up, so we're, we're okay. growing it till November. Okay. Uh, how do I manage? That's going to be shaggy by November. <laughs> oh, that's tough. I don't know. I don't think I've ever really managed stress very well. Got it. Um, I've learned to live with it. Mm. Right? I've learned to live in a constant state of it's like the Hulk, right? You're yeah. always angry. You're always so, angry. They eventually so, become Dr. Hulk. Right. right? Yeah. There's no, there's, there's just no mm -hmm. non-stressful, you know, situation. Yeah. Um, whether it's a little stress, whether it's mm -hmm. a lot of stress, um, there's always some level of stress. Got it. Uh, and I think a lot of uh, founders, entrepreneurs mm -hmm. that are successful are sort of wired that way, yeah. where they can't switch off. Because they're always thinking yeah. about the business, it's about the curse. people, about their customers. Yeah. I'm sure you're that way also with your business. Oh, holy shit. <laughs> you're always thinking of improving things. And the minute yeah. your mind's always working, there's stress. Yeah, happening. it feels weird. Like, why am I not doing anything? Correct. Right? Yeah. It feels weird when you're idling. True. Right? So I think stress is not something that you try and deal with. It's something that you try and live with and make it roll with part it. And just yeah. make you stronger. Absolutely. I know it sounds corny, but... It's something that <laughs> you use to fuel yeah. uh, your your drive and your, I guess, your motivation to try and solve problems. Absolutely. Stress you out. There you go. <laughs> you live with it like the Hulk. Brian is the Hulk. Filipino Hulk. That's why Grab is green. <laughs> there you go. Now, last couple of questions, Brian. In terms of mentorship, I mean, everybody needs a mentor. Shit mm. hits the fan. You know, you just got to go, all right, we'll step back. Now what? Right. But you can't just like, hey, guys, I need help. You you, you have to care about the optics. You, you don't want to look weak. Yep. But we all lead that lifeline. For you, what are those conversations like? And who do you usually go to for those types of conversations for advice? I go to a few. So, um, like, Ernest is a Ernest. good friend and mentor. Right. Uh, You're not his son. No, so just not, FYI. Not son, yeah. FYI. He just has the same name, but that's not his dad. All right. Uh, and there's a couple more that I would go. There's a uh, partner of mine in, in the, another business that I speak to. What, what are those conversations like? And how, how do you ask for advice? Usually over drinks, over dinner. Got it. Uh, if it's critical, over WhatsApp. Got it. Uh, I would talk to them openly and mm -hmm. like explain like this is the problem uh i know you maybe went through this before how did you solve it and they're really open and giving and, and giving suggestions on how to solve it uh it's good that you have a check-in with whoever your mentor is yes uh once in a while right so so you don't have to go through the whole story of absolutely what has happened and then ask the question right. if you have a regular check-in with them I think once every couple of months is good enough, True. right? Uh, to to uh, keep them up to date on what's going on, mm -hmm. uh, because if you you may not feel that you have a question or a problem, but right. just through the stories and those updates, mm -hmm. they may be able to give you right away certain right. pieces of advice. And mentorship also is not a one-time thing; it's no, a it's continuous not. thing. It's, you know, it's a whole relationship too. That yes. right now, like for me, my mentor Joji Azurin, 
Like I call him still, like whenever shit hits the fan, like, ah, yeah. oh, Judgey, I need your help. What do I need? A, what do I do with this? Am I? I'm, I'm gonna do this. Is this right? Yeah. It's like you're altering your own devil's advocate to right. have, and it's always good. Right. Now, last one, I guess this is probably the the biggest one. Brian, what was your biggest fuck up here in Grab? Um, the biggest one was. I guess it was right after the merger okay. where there were certain decisions that we made that was, I guess, more beneficial for a company, for the company, not for our users. Mm. So a lot of the policies that we, we put in place, Got it. Um, like those cancellation features, yeah. the, way, the way we were more driver-centric, right? Got it. Um, led to a lot of complaints on the other side mm. so what i learned from that whole experience was uh we, even if i do say we're more driver centric we never let go of the passenger so we're Got trying it. to find the nice balance mm -hmm. never really tip the scale to one side True. Uh, being the platform you you're the mediator of both sides absolutely so we were trying to mediate what i realized there if you're trying to mediate no one loves you in the end True. Right? Because you're <laughs> you're good on both. You're never great on any one side. Correct. You know? So you got to pick a side to a certain yes. extent. Uh, because when trouble comes, that side that you pick will show extreme love for you and your product and come Correct. to your defense. We didn't do that very well. Mm. Uh, so we had to come up with a 100-day um, campaign mm. to really improve. And we hunkered down and said, these are the aspects of our service that was... Uh, lacking okay. uh, in terms of quality so you know let's zoom in if it hurt one side then so be it because it's live with beneficial a, live with the results, for the platform right. right so that was I think the fuck up there was that we didn't do it sooner um, sure we should have anticipated that mm. uh, it was a lesson that was learned across across grab mm. uh, in most of the markets that we're in wow. uh, so we didn't anticipate and I and I and I take that as my fuck up because Got it. You wear that on your I sleeve. I was supposed right. to be responsible for thinking okay. three steps ahead and anticipating what would have happened. And I Got made it. certain, uh, uh, I guess, I didn't see into the future sure. uh, well. I enough. mean, we're all human. At the end of the day, we make mistakes. Yeah. But yeah. you've owned it and grab is way better now yeah. Uh, yeah. with, with, with much what, better what that for happened. It, yeah. Absolutely. And I haven't seen, I mean, any big media flare up lately i mean you've released this new cancellation thing yeah. uh right now which again ob obviously if you want to explain what that is uh, or whatnot but uh, it's up to you do you want to like attention that or just read articles yeah. it's there it's, absolutely I, mean, I i think people are so desensitized to right. uh grab news already that correct you know whereas before let's say a year ago if this cancellation thing came up there's big news now it's small news, right. and and uh, hopefully everything remains as small news for right. for now till the future. And for for the people who's listening to, I, I just need to remind you that Grab is not a, a right to give us to, to be given to us. This is a privilege that a startup stood up through all this crazy stuff and actually made this happen. We're all pampered now because there's grab yes and sometimes we just gotta take the hits with them support them because we, if you let the platform die guess what we're gonna go back to the dark ages yeah are y'all willing to ride that bus in their jeep again oh uh, good luck yeah. so please rally and support your own because you have to learn the hustle part of it now yeah and and with that at least we we now have you understand what it took to get here to what we have yeah. Now, Brian, last question. You're, you're a super app now. People call you that. You do pay, food, and whatnot. What, what, what's next? It's really finding other aspects of that, uh, of being that everyday super app for the consumers. No? Okay. So really understanding what the consumers want that we don't offer yet. It okay. could be an everyday service. Mm. Uh, and and you know, pay would be a big anchor towards that. Yes. Transport would continue to be that. Food, everyone eats every day. If, yep. if I could put a toothbrush in the app, I would. Um, <laughs> Grab toothbrush. But I can't. Hey, a lot of people don't <laughs> brush their teeth. So I wouldn't be surprised. So maybe a brush your teeth reminder. Um, work with one of the toothpaste companies. There you but go. But really finding uh, those different aspects. Sure. Uh, and the underlying, I guess, mission for us is really sure. to empower 
entrepreneurs. You know? So we have a program that we're going to come up with very soon. Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess you're hearing it first. In there the you go. Uh, it's called GVV, so Grab Ventures Velocity Program. Which GVV. We launched in, uh, in, another, in Indonesia okay. where we would take startups wow. and give them access to the app. And which means giving them access to 150 million Southeast Asians. Holy Asians. shit. Uh, so you know, if you think about Grab as your everyday super app, it's your really everyday Southeast Asian super app. Yes, yes. Any, any service or app that wants to come in from, let's say, the US or from yep. China or from other markets that immediately wants to access mm-hmm. uh, users within the context of mm-hmm. being able to provide an actual service uh, you open that you gates open the, to them already. You open the grab Flood app gates, and yeah. once you're there, then mm-hmm. then uh, you immediately get access to that. Uh, Holy user shit. Base. Now, who, who can access that? Is there like a vetting process? that you There need will to... be a vetting process, kind of like the yep. one of those VC shows got where it, got it. people will come and pitch. Mm-hmm. Um, the winners would then be put in a two-month boot camp. Wow, like an uh, incubation period. Like a small incubator. Okay. Uh, and uh, you know, once once we have it, we'll definitely announce it. Um, there you go. But you got a heads up from the Hulk himself, yep, right? Yep, yep. Hulk, that's Captain America, that uh, <laughs> as well. So Brian, we have you said that you had a special special uh, little deal uh, here for for those who are going to listen to this episode. Eligible. Take note that if you're listening to this late, you're 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 too you're, you're gone. Too late. So <laughs> you're too late. So this 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 promo. That Grab is going to be super generous for us. It will only run from May 6th to May 13th. Okay, take note of that, right? Because, uh, you know, uh, Brian uh, here was so generous that you're going to give us a promo code for us. We're going to give you a promo code to all your listeners for Grab Food. Yep. um, Which they would be able to enjoy free delivery. Woo! To May 13th, from May 6th to May 13th. May 6th to May 13th. And the promo code is obviously Hustle Share. All right, Brian, so much again. Thank you very much. This is like probably the best episode by far. No disrespect to our first 21, li- uh, but dude, this is gold. And again, thank you. And I hope you guys learned a, li- a lot from this episode. And again, if you guys like this episode, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the podcast, whatever podcast app you're listening this on to. And please, if you want any other hustler, please do message us in our chat bot on m.me slash hustle share powered by chatbot ph and again brian thank you my man thank you appreciate it thank you so Uh, much all right and this i'll see you guys in the next episode peace